As a bookkeeper, what do you do if you are finding tons of personal transactions mixed in with your client's business transactions? I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I would deal with this and some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. And if you do want the really quick answer, it's basically categorize any personal transactions as an equity account. You can call it what you want. You can call it like owner's personal expenses. But if you do want to come along with me, the three steps are going to be, first of all, you need to make a plan and figure out what is going on. Number two, fix the transactions. And there's three different categories that I use to kind of sort this problem. And then number three is prevent. You want to stop this problem from happening in the future. So for step one planning, I want you to sit down with your client and talk to them about this problem. Figure out what's going on and what types of transactions they are spending on their business account. Because you're going to need to know all the vendors that you're seeing that are personal. So do they have their gym membership on there? Do they, you know, go to Safeway and buy groceries? Maybe some stuff is personal and some stuff is for business, even within the same, you know, transaction, the same cart. Same with Amazon. Are they buying business stuff from their personal Amazon account? Are they writing checks to certain people that are personal versus business? So you just looking at the books with fresh eyes, especially if it's a newer client, you're not always going to be able to identify which things are business and which are personal. So that is why this conversation to start out is going to help you like just learn about what they're doing and you know, kind of like what's going wrong. It's also going to be really helpful to figure out if you don't already know what the bank accounts look like. So is there just one bank account that's an issue with the mixing, the personal and the business, or is it across the board? Are they having problems with PayPal? Like what accounts are you going to be working with? And it's not really like illegal to mix personal and business accounts. It's just not good accounting. So there are generally accepted accounting principles. I have a video all about that. The acronym is GA. AP. The thumbnail looks like that and it just talks about kind of the basics of these principles. And these are guidelines so that all small businesses across the US or whoever is implementing these accounting principles play by the same rules. So if you're applying for a bank loan, if you're paying taxes, all of these things, you want to make sure people are, you know, have the same standards across the board. All right, so you've done step one, kind of the planning, and now you actually need to get into QuickBooks and start categorizing and fixing this mess. I do have a more detailed video about cleanups and also catch-ups. I'll link them in the description box below. That's what the thumbnails look like. You can check out those if you have a new client with really messy books. But oftentimes just separating out personal transactions isn't as difficult as cleaning up an entire problematic set of books. So when I'm in my client's bank account, I'm looking at all these transactions. Basically, there's three things that it could be. It could either be a legit business expense, it could be a personal expense or it could be like, I don't know if it's which one it is. So those are the three things I have in my mind. So first of all, business expenses. This is just the straightforward bookkeeping. So if they have a utility that is a business expense, you know, you're going to put it in the utilities. If it is their rent, you'll put it in the rent. If it's business income, you're going to put it in the income category. And as a bookkeeper, a lot of the times I'm using the categories that are already in QuickBooks. I will create my own sometimes if it makes sense. I have a video all about the chart of accounts. The thumbnail looks like that. You can check out if you want more about, you know, creating accounts and how it kind of work within the categories that come in QuickBooks. All right, so those business expenses, hopefully you can put in the correct categories. Then those personal expenses. So you know, you know, these 10 vendors. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you need to put those in an equity account. You can use one of the equity accounts that are already created within QuickBooks. I can't remember the exact name, but it's something like owners pay and contribution, something like that. That is an equity account that is already in there. For a case like this, I might create my own new equity account and call it Sally's personal expenses. And then it's really clear that these are kind of like the problem areas that Sally has. And then we can pull a report for all of her personal expenses. And also she can look over that and make sure that, you know, everything's been categorized correctly. So I would probably just make a new account in the chart of accounts that is specifically for these personal items. And then when Sally takes out her owner's draws later, it's not gonna be mixed in there, it'll kind of be separated. But what I would not do is further categorize Sally's personal expenses, just because I think that's kind of a waste of time. I wouldn't be like, Sally's dry cleaner, Sally's hair salon, Sally's gym membership within the categories. Someone in my comment section mentioned they were doing that and that's not incorrect. It just takes more time. There is maybe a situation where your client would want their personal expenses categorized like that within the equity. 
Um, and that's fine if they want to pay you to do that. That's great too. <laughs> and I haven't mentioned my name is Morgan. My website is findpoints.biz. I love to help bookkeepers run their bookkeeping businesses more efficiently. A thumbs up really does help me out a lot and I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment letting me know where you're located and if you have had a problem with uh, cleanups like this or with people mixing personal and business expenses. You're doing good. You're working your way down the list. So you're categorizing stuff either as business expenses, personal expenses, and then there's going to be some that you just don't know. Vendors that you're like, hmm, I'm not sure like what this is. A lot of times I will Google vendors if I don't know what they are and if I can see, oh, that's a restaurant right by my client's house or right by, you know, their business then it's probably meals. But if even after Googling, I cannot figure out what it is, I will put those all into one category. So a lot of times I will use Ask My Accountant or you can rename it again. If you already have something else in Ask My Accountant, you can just create a new account. This one I usually would make an expense account. It's also just a holding tank. So some of them might go to equity later. Some of them will go to as business ex expenses later also, but it's just a holding account. So again, you can pull a list of all those and send them to your client. Speaking of that, you are going to want to send some lists. Usually I would export them to Excel documents and email them to my client. You can decide depending on how big the project is, if you want to do it like little by little, you know, month by month or, you know, chunks at a time, or if you can just wait and do like you know, the whole year or something. So yeah, definitely send them like that Ask My Accountant or the mystery transactions list. And then you can probably also learn from that as well. You're like, oh, this vendor is called Joe's Plumbing and that one is always a business expense because it's legitimate. All right, yay. So after a couple of weeks or months of working on this sorting, or maybe it just took you a day, um, now you have the books all clean and organized. Nice job. So now you are on to step three, which is prevent this problem in the future. So again, this is going to require a conversation with your client, possibly multiple conversations, depending on how like deep rooted their issues are, or, you know, how disorganized their books are. So really try to drill down and figure out why this is happening and what you can do to stop it. Are some of their bills on auto pay? into the business account that should not be. Do they carry around their business card and accidentally use it at Costco? And it is okay if they go to Costco and they wanna buy some personal and some business stuff that is understandable. So you can either train them to do it in like two separate transactions with two, you know, their personal card first and then their business card. Or if they have a system of communicating that to you, that is okay as well. Maybe they send you an email and say, for this transaction on this date, I spent $50 of personal and $50 of business stuff. And then within QuickBooks, when you see that Costco transaction come in, you can split it into those two categories, into the expense and then to equity. And for the most part, I have found that people want to do the right thing. I do have a video about the worst clients you can check out. That's the thumbnail. Um, you know, some people are being like slightly dishonest or they think no one's going to notice. But usually people are trying to do the right thing. They're just kind of disorganized. And having you as the bookkeeper kind of watching them, looking over their shoulder does help alleviate the problem. And in my experience, usually I'll have to send them a monthly report of like either the question transactions, like are these personal, are these not? And have them go through and write in the Excel document if they are or not and tell me what they're for. And then hopefully over time, that list you are sending them is getting smaller and smaller. Cause it is kind of like an annoyance to have, you know, this little task they have to do every month. Whereas if they just had better systems up front, they could avoid that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will come to you next week with another video. Take care.